I'm Des. Today we're in Germany, the country of the unlimited Autobahn, with this Bella Macchina from Italy, the Ferrari 488 GTB. But I won't keep you any longer, let's find out what it's like to drive. As far as supercars go, this car is one of the most beloved cars on the street. Wherever you go, people take out their smartphones and take a photo or come up to you and want to have a chat about the car. But there's a lot more to it than just its looks and its sound. The interior of this 488 is very driver oriented, so all the controls are centered towards the driver. The combination of beautiful leather, red stitching, and carbon fiber give it a really pleasant um, appearance and also sporty appearance. Most um, controls are displayed on two little screens beside the rev counter which is still like a Ferrari signature positioned in the center of the of the dash. Uh, provides the rev counter and the, and the gear. For the speed I have to look to the left side um, on the tiny little screen there. They're controlled with little knobs here on the side and um, I can connect my phone use the radio or use the satellite navigation um, with ease on the, on the touchpad here. The 458 Italia had this mega addictive V8 sound. Now with the turbo engine the sound characteristics is a little bit different but you can still hear it's a Ferrari. Unlike its competitors it still has this very sharp um, Ferrari tone, especially around 3,500 RPM, you can hear this very full bodied um, stride from the titanium exhaust. If you dare to put your foot down fully, the car skyrockets from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 3 seconds. 0 to 200 kilometers an hour, it takes only 8.3 seconds and um, if you uh, keep on pushing the car will top out at a top speed of 330 kilometers an hour. Now let's take a closer look at the exterior of the Ferrari 488 GTB. From the front, it's actually it has a very nice clean line to it. It's very wide. Um, has uh, two um, air outlets here, which you can see in the in the front bonnet. Beautiful LED lights, and um, not one but two front splitters. So um, you can actually um, you can actually see it by um, by going a little bit closer. These are finished in carbon fiber, which is an optional extra. Um, but you can here, as you can see, I can put my hand through it. So there's a there's a top uh, top wing, and then there's a second um, a second carbon fiber splitter uh, below. Um, that has benefits not just for the aerodynamics, uh, it produces a great amount of downforce, um, but it's also reducing the drag coefficient. So uh, there's less air resistant and that makes the car go faster as well. There's quite a bit of space under the bonnet as well. So uh, let me show you. It actually fits, uh, I think, a decent sized suitcase and, um, and a weekend bag easily. And then there's some Ferrari accessories, some emergency kit, and um, a pretty good, uh, pretty good size. Um, I guess it's bigger than the, than the Audi R8 or some of its uh, mid engine and rear engine uh, competitors. In comparison to the 458 Italia, its predecessor, the brakes have been improved as well. So the stopping power is, uh, is increased. Um, here on the side, you see a carbon fiber side skirt, which has a, a nice little shape, uh, which is mainly due to the door. The door is very, very round. If, you, if I stand where I stand right now, it's, um, it's about this wide. Uh, a normal door is almost vertical and has a, a zero width, um, but this is a very, very round shape. Um, partly because of the air inlet that goes here. The bottom part goes to the intercooler, the top part goes to the, to the engine. 
One of my favorite details, design details of the car is this rear light. Uh, beautiful round shape, but also it's exposed here on the top. And then there's this carbon fiber inlet on the side. It just looks stunning. The turbocharged V8 engine lies exposed under glass cover. And you can not just see it from the outside, but also as a driver, there's a glass window directly behind you. So if you look over your shoulder, you see the engine immediately. And um, every time I look, I look from the driver's seat, I look to the engine, I get a smile on my face, just because it's so unique. And um, it's a beautiful uh, piece of art, really. Then here on the rear, titanium exhaust, which provides the, the beautiful and typical Ferrari soundtrack. Um, and then underneath it is a rede redesigned diffuser, uh, which aids the aerodynamics as well. Um, I think in total there's something like 345 kilograms of downforce that this car can produce in the, in the top. Um, and that is really um, a lot. This car is packed with a lot of clever technology. Some of it is carried over from F1, like the F1 style gearbox with this beautiful carbon fiber flappy pedals. Others are just developed for fun. Uh, one of them is uh, side assist, which actually allows the car to control the angle at which you um, come out of the corner. So if you start accelerating out of the corner and you start to drift a little bit, uh, depending on the drive mode you're in, it will actually allow you to go out of the corner in a bigger angle. And um, this makes drifting really easy. The most essential controls that I need for driving are all located on the steering wheel. So I have the indicators, the windscreen wipers, um, the start-stop button and the big beam all on the, um, on the steering wheel. Since the F430 there's also a, a switch which is called the Manettino, which is Italian for little switch. Uh, which allows me to choose between five predefined driving programs. This includes wet, sport, race, um, traction control off and uh, stability control off. On, um, in wet mode it reduces the power a little bit so you can um, even get uh, sporty driving um, in wet conditions. Sport um, gives more power and uh, stiffens the, the car a little bit. Um, in race, even more systems are, um, are more race-oriented, as the, as the name suggests. This even includes uh, things like ABS, stability control, traction control. Um, they can all be set to, to different levels. Steering the car over this beautiful country road, you realize that this is really the benchmark for a super sports car. The steering is razor sharp, even on the winter tires that we're on right now. Power delivery is incredible. It really grabs you by the throat every single time you put your, you put the pedal down, and um, you can't even get close to the full potential of the car on the road. You have to take it on track to get the most out of this car. What can I say? 488 GTB. Um, it's not just a beautiful car, but it's also an incredibly fast car. And uh, there's a lot more to it than just the, the specs and just the, the performance. Because you can, from seeing three, to, three seconds to 100 on a piece of paper already indicates that this is, this is quite a beast. Um, but uh, there's a few ways that the car really surprised me. It's, it's so um, sensitive and, and um, precious when you turn the, turn the steering wheel. And uh, also inside, there's quite a lot of space. Uh, there are a lot of supercars. I'm just simply too tall to, to fit comfortably. But uh, and this was probably the least car I was expecting to be uh, to be suitable for uh, for someone my size. But it's uh, way more spacious inside than a Lamborghini or um, Audi R8 or. Um, the only car that comes close in terms of uh, practicality and in terms of space is, uh, is a Porsche 911 Turbo. The introduction of a turbo engine on this model marks a different era for Ferrari. It doesn't howl as much as its predecessor and it's not, maybe not as emotional, but it's still very much a Ferrari engine. You get this beautiful sound at 3,500 RPM and it still goes beautifully up to a red line of about 8,000 RPM. If I had the money and was looking for a car in the spice range, I would definitely consider one of these.